So today we're going to be looking at problems where um, an object is experiencing um, forces which are not in equilibrium and um, we don't know the direction of the force or, and we need to use the different um, forces that are at work on the object to find the direction and the acceleration that the object is experiencing. So, we know if we have a situation where we have some object and say it's experiencing a force in direction A and a force in direction B, we can add these vectors up. So we just move this up to here, B is going to be here, and then this resultant force F would be um, the resultant and F would be the combination of forces A and B and it would give us the direction and we can then apply Newton's second law on F. So that would be F equals m a and we can use a combination of um, trigonometry to find the magnitude and the direction of f now we can also have a situation where if we have three or more forces so we've got a in this direction we've got b here and see we've got c here um we can do the same here. We can draw um, the forces and find out the resultant. So we've got our vector A and then B comes along here and then C would come bring it along parallel to B and it would come down like that. That would be C and then we've got this is our starting point and we've got this force here F which is our resultant. Um, so when there's two or more forces, when there's two plus forces we find the components of the net force by resolving the horizontal and vertical components. So then we'd have the case where we've got F and we would have F of Y and F of X and some angle theta. Um, to find the forces f of x, so say we had the situation like this, we have this, um, these different vectors and this is our object. We would find the components of f of x for each of these and then we find f of y for each of these and add them together. So we'd have f of find out what f of x would be, what find out what f of y would be, and then we can use once we find the components of f of x and f of y, we can use Pythagoras to find f equals f of x squared plus f of y squared and then the square root. Um, the direction, for the direction, we use um, tan of theta is going to be f of y over f of x and we can use that so we'd use 
or f of y and f of x to find the tan of theta, which gives us theta. Um, now, it's important that when we think about, we've got our force diagram here, um, that we deal with the resultant force and the components separately, so we don't get them confused as being the same thing. Um, that'll come clear as we do some examples. So let's do that now. So we've got a boat of mass 100 kilograms and it experiences a force um, oops, of 30 newtons east, eastward um, from the wind and 40 newtons from the tide at a bearing of 35 degrees as shown. We're going to do a wee diagram for this. So we want to find the direction and acceleration of the motion. So here's going to be our diagram. Here's our wee boat. And we've got 30 newtons from the wind in the easterly direction. Now, to the dashed line to show north, here is our 40 newtons from the wind, and that's at 35 degrees. So the most directional motion is going to be somewhere like that at some angle of theta. That's going to be the direction of motion. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, add the vectors together. So we've got our 30 degrees, our 30 newtons, sorry, and then we'll have 40 newtons here. And then we'll have a resultant vector here, f. And that'll be at some angle theta. Now, what's this angle here going to be? Well, if the bearing is 35, that's going to be, this is our north. So it'll be this will be here, 35 add 90, because if you think about here, that's our north. That's at 90 degrees, but then it's on the bearing of 35. So 35 add 90 equals 125 degrees. And this is as a 40. So we can use Pythagoras to find out this force. And we're going to call it R, as a res R for resultant. So R squared equals 40 squared plus 30 squared. Oh, we're actually, we're going to use, sorry, we're not going to use um, Pythagoras, because it's not a right angle. We're going to use the cosine rule. Um, so we've got 40 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 30, 40 times 30. Um, and that's going to times cosine of 125. So working all that out, and then taking the square root, we'll get R as 62.3 newtons. Now, we know that F, from Newton's second law, F equals ma. We've got a force of 62.3, and the mass is 100. That would be times A, so A must be 0.6. 2, 3 metres per second squared. Now, 
we can now add some more trigonometry to this. We're going to now use the sine rule to find our angle. So we've got um, 40 over sine theta must be equal to the resultant, which we've got here, 62.3 over sine of 125. And that will then, working all that out, rearranging everything, so theta must be 31.8 degrees. Now, but we want it as a bearing, so let's think about this. This is our north. That angle is 38.9. But this is our bearing. We'll call it alpha. Alpha must be equal to 90 minus 31.8, which is 58 degrees. Oops. A particle of mass 3 kilograms attached to 3 ropes in the horizontal plane with forces of 2 newtons, 4 newtons and 3 newtons and we're going to show us in a diagram so we've got, oops a daisy that's not a straight line, 2 newtons and then we've got 4 newtons and we've got three newtons and then we've got an angle of 30 degrees so we want to find the acceleration and the direction so what we want to do is we're going to have um, we want to find the f of x the, the x component and the y component of the forces to then find our resultant f and that will also give us theta. So let's think about the look at, at these vectors f of x must be now there's no component of f <coughs> of x of the x force from this two newtons because it's in the vertical. Um, so we'll have 4 is in the x direction, so that's going to be 4. And then we're going to have plus, so this will be um, 3 cosine 30. 3 times the cosine of 30. And that will give us 6.60 newtons. Now we want the force in the y direction. So this vector, the 2 newtons, is all in the y direction, so that's 2. Um, but this one, now let's think about this in the y direction. If you think about this vector here, the y direction is coming down this way. So it's in the opposite direction of the 2 newtons. So it's going to be minus um, 3 sine 30. So when you're thinking about the components of the different forces, think about the direction there, you, the object here is going to feel them in relation to each other so for what what you're going to add and subtract so that's going to give us 0 0.5 newtons so there we've got the f of y in this bit here that's the f of x it's not clear so now we can use um, tan theta must be f of y 
over f of x. So we're using the components here. So f of y is 0.5, f of x is 6.60, and that's going to give us, um, what will give us theta is equal to 4.33 degrees. And we can now use Pythagoras. f squared is going to be f of y squared plus f of x squared. Working all that out, you're going to get f equals 6.62 newtons. Now, we can take this resultant force, and now we take the resultant force and apply newton's second. So f equals ma. We've got our 6.62. Now we've been told our mass is 3 kilograms and that then multiplied by the acceleration. Working that out, we'll have an acceleration of 2.21 meters per second squared. So I hope that helps.